Well, good morning. As I'm sure everyone knows, we have our first exam on Monday. I'm so excited. <laughs> Today we're going to go through the first hour exam review. I hope you've heard enough the many friends. Um, having the many said that we had protons, electrons, and neutrons. The protons and neutrons lived in the nucleus. They were approximately equal in mass, and electrons were much, much less. I think the one that works here, mass of proton and neutron are about equal. Electron is much, much less. So C, I believe, is the best answer. Proton, about equal to neutron, and electrons are less. All right, which contains the largest number of neutrons? This is an exercise in what? Subtraction, right? All you have to do is look at the mass number and subtract the number of protons at the atomic number. That gives you neutrons. So, 31. Minus 15, what's that, about 16? Yeah, something like that. This is 20, I think. That's 16 or so, I think. If you do simply mass number minus atomic number, the chlorine is the one that wins. Remember, if any of these were charged, we would show the charge as either plus or minus um, up here as a second superscript. Mass number of a chlorine with 18 neutrons. Again, this is now just an exercise in can you find chlorine in the periodic table? And can you add chlorine? It's going to be right down here. It's a halogen, group 7. Atomic number is 17. 17 plus 18 is 35. If anyone has a question as we're going through these, I'm going to go through them quickly. Number one as a confidence builder. So that you'll look at this and say, gosh, that was simple. And number two, just because that's the way I do it. <laughs> All right, we have a 550 milligram sample. Which of this, these express that in terms of kilograms? Now, you know, you could do this in your head. I don't always advise on an exam doing it in your head. <clears throat> Probably better off just to write your given and your ratios, whatever. Our given here is going to be 550 milligrams. We're trying to get to kilograms, so we need one ratio to go from milligram to kilogram. How many milligrams in a gram? A thousand. So we write our first ratio like this. One gram, a thousand milligrams, making sure, of course, that the milligrams is in our denominator. That way they cancel. Now our given as units of grams. We simply need to go from grams to kilograms. How many grams in a one kilogram? It's a thousand again. So we simply need another ratio with gram in our denominator. Once again, grams will now cancel. We have 550, so that's um, 5.5 times 10 squared. 
and we're going to divide it by 10 to the 6. When we do that, we subtract the exponents here, and we wind up with 10 to the 4. Now this is a cute one. Which of these is the largest volume? It's a nice exercise, and do I remember the metric prefixes? Micro is 10 to the minus 6, isn't it? Here we have 10 to the 4th, and this is 10 to the minus 6, so well, that's about 10 to the minus 2 liters, right? Pico, 10 to the minus 12. We have 1,000 of them. We're down at 10 to the minus 8. Those are both real small. This is 0.1 liter. That's a lot. That's 100 milliliters, isn't it? Nano, 10 to the minus 9. We're down to 10 to the minus 8. And finally, this is 10 cubic centimeters, the same as 10 milliliters. I think the winner here is going to be the 100 mils. All right, simple significant figure question. We are doing a multiplication. We remember that when we multiply and divide, what you do is just look at your numbers, decide which one has the fewest number of significant figures. Your answer can have no more than the number with the fewest. The fewest here is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you'd multiply this out, and then you would round it to four significant figures. All right, here we have a ground state configuration. Again, this is just terminology. That means just the element in its standard state. So as it sits there happily on the periodic table. Um, this is its electron configuration, and we just want to figure out what it is. Well, clearly, we must be in our second period, right? Because we have two S and two P's. So <coughs> we're in this group here. Our two S is full. So we filled up these two guys. And now we have four electrons in our P orbitals. All we have to do here is count. One, two, three, four. And that makes it oxygen. Go to your 2p orbitals here, count out your four electrons, and we're there. Density of chloroform is so and so. What volume in mills? Will 5.64 grams of chloroform occupy? Density, we know, is simply mass divided by volume. Here, we're looking for a volume, aren't we? So all we have to do is take and rearrange this equation. Volume is going to be equal to mass divided by density. Okay, so we just go up to our problem. 
Here is our mass, 5.64. Here's our density. We simply divide it out. We are working to three significant figures, aren't we? Therefore, 3.80 would be our appropriate answer. Just divide 5.64 by 1.4832. Point point All right, which element is drawn correctly? Now, you know, this is actually really, really simple. All you have to do is find these guys on the periodic table and decide which period they're in, right? I'm sorry, which group? Let's start here with gallium. Gallium is right here. It's in the third group, group 3A. Therefore, it should have three valence electrons. It's shown with two. That means it's wrong. <clears throat> Aluminum is also in group 3. It is also shown with two electrons. It is also wrong. Thallium down here. My gosh, that's also in group 3. And I've shown it with four electrons. That's wrong. And we've already been through aluminum. We know that it's group three, doesn't have just one, it has three. Therefore, bromine, obviously, is the correct one. Group seven, seven valence electrons. Now this one's a little more challenging. We have to look at these structures, and they're fairly complex structures, and we have to decide which of these is wrong. Now, you could just look at your periodic table, <coughs> come up with um, the uh, electron configuration for each of the atoms and draw the Lewis structures and see if they're right or not. Um, a kind of a long way to do it. Kind of a shortcut is to do like um, we do in the tutorial. Step one, remember, is to look at your compound and figure up how many electrons, how many valence electrons you have. Okay? So if you know how many valence electrons it's supposed to have, what you can do is just look at each of these and very quickly see if you have enough, too many, too few, whatever. So that's a nice, simple way to do it. Let's look at NO2 first. <clears throat> Nitrogen is going to be here in group 5, so that's 5 of us. We have 2 oxygens. There are 6 each, that's 12. We're looking at 17, aren't we? Here we have 8, 16, 17. That looks okay to me. Our next one here is beryllium chloride. Beryllium. Oh, here it is. It's hiding. It's in group two, so it has two electrons. Each of the chlorines um, are going to have seven, so that's 14. 
So 14 plus 2 is 16, right? Let's count them up. We have 8. We have 16. No lone pairs. My gosh, that works. Carbonate. Carbon is group 4. Oxygen is group 6. So we have 6 times 3 is 18 plus 4. That's 22. Plus 2 more. So that's 24. What do we have? Oh, we have 8, 16, 24. Methane. Carbon is group 4, hydrogen group 1. We should have 8 electrons total. We have 4 covalent bonds. Each of them are worth 2. That's 8. So kind of by difference, this is the one that's going to be wrong. But let's prove it to ourselves. Sulfur is here in group 6, and so is oxygen. So we have 6 times 3 is 18. Here we have 8 up top, 8 on the bottom. That's only 16. The extra electron pair is going to live here on the sulfur. Any questions? Now again, you could do it the other way. You don't draw all the structures out and check them that way. But if you've gone through the um, Lewis tutorial, and I can't tell who does because you don't send email with that one, but if you've gone through that and you've practiced adding up electrons, that's a nice simple way to do it. All right, here we're going to draw our very own Lewis structure. We have a chlorine, a carbon, and a nitrogen. <clears throat> we know that chlorine is going to be group 7. It will have 7 valence electrons. Carbon will have 4, and nitrogen will have 5. So we're starting off with something like this. Here's our 7, here's our 4, and here's our 5. What we have to do is somehow come up with a combination that's going to give everybody 8. Now, it's fairly simple or obvious to see that we can bond our chlorine here like this um, with no problem. So that's going to be a single bond. What we're really going to work with here is going to be our carbon and our nitrogen. We can make one bond here with our CN right through here. And remember we have two unpaired electrons here, two unpaired electrons here. All we have to do is move these guys in and we're going to make a triple bond. So here's our first bonding pair. Here's our second bonding pair. Now I just want to take and move these guys down, move these guys up. So I have this with my carbon-nitrogen triple bond. Sticking in our lines, here's our two electron single covalent bond and three uh, covalent bonds here. This is a triple bond. Practice doing this one. If you haven't done it already, I hope you did. <clears throat> because um, on the exam, you do have one problem that will say 
draw the Lewis structure around something. Except I'll tell you what the something is. Okay? So you need to know how to do this. You need to draw it clearly, concisely. And remember, I'm grading it, okay? I'm the one that's going to grade it. Let me just give you a, a hint, a secret. If you draw a structure and it's beautiful, it's just gorgeous. I am very likely to look at it and say, oh, that must be right. <laughs> but if you draw the correct structure and you make it really sloppy and ugly, I'm going to say, ah, my gosh, what in the world is this thing? So, please remember that. Here's another Lewis structure problem. We have nitrogen trifluoride. And we're trying to pick out the correct Lewis structure. Now, nitrogen we know is group 5. Fluorine is group 7. So we're dealing with 7 times 3 is 21 plus 5. That's 26 or so, right? Um, I believe that if you run through these guys, let's just start down here with some absurdities. Uh, look at this poor nitrogen. It has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons around it, doesn't it? Oh, it's a real, real, no, that doesn't work. Uh, this one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons. It's even less happy. Uh, this one has 10 electrons on the nitrogen, but <laughs> we're missing all the electrons on the fluorine. Uh, that's pretty bad, isn't it? So we're down to these two. Both of these have the proper number of electrons. Um, our fluorine here has eight. We have eight here. We have eight here. Our nitrogen has eight. This guy, our nitrogen has eight. Every fluorine has eight. Um, I think that this one, in spite of the fact that it has eight, is still, this one is short, two electrons. I have to add that up. This guy, however, is the one that works. Again, we started with nitrogen, three electrons, three fluorines, each for seven, bonded them all together, and that's our proper structure. Sometimes there are too many dots, I just can't add them up in my head quickly. All right, which of these is wrong? Oxygen is group six. It's going to have a negative two charge, and we're going to call it oxide, correct? Cadmium is group two. It will lose two electrons and become a dication. That's good. These are polyatomics. We know that the chlorine groups are all going to have a minus one charge. And so that's good. That's right. <coughs> um, chlorate, the parent, is ClO3. That's good. Carbonate is CO3 with a minus two. If we make hydrogen carbonate, we drop our charge by one. So HCO3 is, in fact, hydrogen carbonate. This is not nitrate. What is it? This is nitrite. Nitrate is an O3 minus. All right, we have a compound. We have two NH4s and one sulfur. What is the proper 
chemical name. First thing you have to decide here is, is this going to be molecular or ionic? What is NH4 plus the ammonium cation, right? It's the only positive polyatomic we need to know right now. If it's a polyatomic, this is ionic. Now that means we don't use multipliers, right? So right away, this thing with the dye, that goes away. And we also don't need these things, the Roman numerals, because we only use those for transition metals. So we've eliminated three out of our five just right away. Is this ammonium sulfide, ammonium sulfite? Well, this is just a sulfur, isn't it? So it's going to be a sulfide. Sulfite, we all remember, is SO3 minus 2. Barium sulfate. Barium is a group 2 metal, isn't it? So its charge will be plus 2. Sulfate, that's one of our polyatomics. It's going to be SO4, and it's going to be a minus 2. So we have a plus 2 and a minus 2. All we have to do is put them together. The only one that's going to work here is going to be this. This is barium sulfite. Barium is plus 2, not plus 3. Sulfate is minus 2, not minus 1. This is the only one that works. Which of these is iron 3 oxide? Well, the simplest way, I suppose, is just to add up how many minus twos we're going to get for oxidation numbers from our oxygens. See how many irons are on the compound and figure out which one must be plus three. All right, if this is minus two, iron must be plus two. If this is minus two, each iron would have to be plus one. This is six negatives, isn't it? This iron would have to be plus six. This is 10 negatives. Each iron would have to be plus five. And finally, we have three oxygens at minus two each. That's minus six. Two irons must be plus three six positives and six negatives. Remember, right now, as far as oxidation numbers go, the ones you believe in, the ones you remember, oxygen at minus two, 
halogens at minus 1. IF7, what is it? First of all, is it covalent or is it ionic? It's going to be a molecular compound, isn't it? Both of these are halogens, actually, aren't they? They're both group 7. Okay. Well, be an interesting Lewis structure to draw, wouldn't it? Interesting question. I just thought of it. Rats. How many electrons around the iodine? But that's for another test, I guess. Okay, so it's going to be molecular. That means we need multipliers, right? How do you say seven? Hept. So we're looking for a hept. We actually only see two of them, don't we? See how easy it can be to take an exam like this? We only have two to choose from now. Do we use mono in our first word? No. Therefore, this is simply iodine heptafluoride. All right, we have chlorine 37. I want to know in sequence here which of these shows the atomic number, number of neutrons, and the mass number respectively. Probably need to peek at your periodic table, don't you? Chlorine. Let's find chlorine over here on the wall. 17? That's its atomic number? And I can't see that box. All right, so if it's 17, actually, <laughs> Since we're looking for the atomic number, we have already just eliminated it down to two. If 37 is our isotope, that's our mass number, so that's going to be this one, which means it must also have 20 neutrons. Doesn't matter how many electrons it has. No! Only thing that matters to make it chlorine is that it must have 17 protons. Which of these is neon? Neon, we remember, is one of our inert gases, isn't it? It's right here in our second period. That means that we have filled up our first period. That's 1s2. Well, all these are 1s2s. We have filled up the s orbitals in our second period. They're all 2s2s. Now we have placed how many electrons in our P orbitals? One, two, three, four, five, six. The only one that works here is this guy. Now, you know, we could have automatically ruled out this guy, this guy, and this guy, and frankly, this one. These guys we could rule out because they have threes, or in the second period. And this one is so stupid because you can't put eight electrons in a p orbital. <laughs> and finally, which of the following is a physical change? Boiling water, melting wax, condensing water vapor into rainfall. It's still wax, it's still water, it's still water. They're all 
physical changes. Now you see, we got through that in roughly 30 minutes. Don't you feel confident that you can look through your exam in 30 minutes or less because you don't have to listen to me talk? That would be the help. All right, let's go ahead and run quickly through the first sample exam. Can you just tell one question? Which one? Uh, the group, the, this is the plus one, plus the chart, right? right. Plus one, plus two, uh -huh. plus three. Oh, so this is plus three, and then the rest? Then we, then we start here, we go minus three, minus two, minus one. Okay, and how, so if you have something Well, these here. are just kind of, they are actually in a form that they can be transition metals, or they're going to be molecular. All right, remember, you will get a periodic table, but it will not be colorful. Um, it'll be just the plain periodic table, looking pretty much like the one on the wall here, except without the zigzag line. On the real sample exam, the first question is this. We have a mass of 5.5 times 10 to the minus 4. How many milligrams is that? Well, we're dealing with grams. Our given here is simply going to be the number of grams, isn't it? We want to go from grams to milligrams. How many milligrams in one gram? A thousand. We must set up a ratio with gram in our denominator. Grams here are going to cancel. And we simply multiply 10 to the minus 4 times 10 cubed. That's going to give us 10 to the minus 1. If you have trouble with that, go to the... Uh, Tutorial on exponents is good practice. All you do is add, subtract, whatever. Gee, this looks a lot like the tutorial, doesn't it? Complete the following. This is actually two questions, questions two and three. To do this, we need our periodic table. Magnesium. Step one, find it. Twelve. Right there. It's a second period element. Atomic number of twelve. Therefore, how many protons? Twelve. Now, if this guy has only ten electrons and twelve protons, it's going to be positive, isn't it? It's going to be a plus two. Do you have to write the plus or no? Do you have to write the plus? Probably not. I mean, I would. But. And finally, if the mass number is 24 and 12 of those are protons, 12 of them must be neutrons. All right, lead. Step one, we have to find it. Lead is going to be down here. Its atomic number is 82. Therefore, how many protons does it have? 82. Now, if it also has 125 neutrons, you have to add these up, don't you? 207 as our mass number. Now here, we have a plus three charge on this. That means it has three less electrons than it does protons. So we're going to start at 82, take three away, and we get 79. Quickly, write the formula for ammonium, hydrogen, 
carbonate. Well, ammonium, we remember, is our polyatomic cation. It is going to be NH4. If it was just written by itself, we would put a plus sign. Carbonate, we remember, is CO3, and it has a minus 2 charge. If we're going to make it hydrogen carbonate, all we have to do is stick a hydrogen in between, and that is our formula. Again, the ammonium is plus one, hydrogen carbonate is minus one. Carbonate, remember, we start off at minus two, take one charge away for the hydrogen. Write the atomic symbol for something. Here's the key word. This is anionic. 18 electrons, 16 neutrons, charge of minus 2. All right, now let's think about this. It has 18 electrons. Its charge is minus two. That means it has two extra electrons, right? So if we're looking for the number of protons, we're going to take our 18 and simply subtract two. So we're looking at 16 protons. This is sulfur, atomic number 16. Now, to make our atomic symbol, we write an S. Our number of protons goes in as our subscript. Our mass number, if it's given that we have 16 neutrons, 16 protons, this is 32. And then finally, this is a dianion, so we must show that as 2 minus. Simply looking at trends in our periodic table, which of these guys is going to be the most electronegative? Well, here's our periodic table. And what do we remember about electronegativity? Remember, it starts down here at a very low number. And it heads up on an angle towards warning. Another way to show it is with a really cute little periodic table like this, where the height is proportional to the electronegativity. And as you can see, it's a nice little ramp going from here up towards flooring. So what we have to do is simply find each of these guys. AU is gold. Gold's going to be down here. That's not going to be real high, is it? Are rhenium? That's always a hard one to find. There's RU, would that work? Uh -huh. Okay. No, oh, here it is, right here. Yeah, see, that's bad too. <laughs> nitrogen. Oh, nitrogen's way up here. That's good. Tellurium. 
gonna be in here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, here it is, 2.0. And finally, cesium. Cesium, way down here, 0 0.9. Remember, our ramp goes up like this. We are looking here for our highest, and clearly, that's going to be nitrogen. The basic trends you want to remember, as you go across it gets bigger, as you go up it gets bigger. Gee, this looks just like, looks exactly like the question on the other exam, doesn't it? This is the parent for phosphorus, PO4. They're all minus 3. This is phosphate. MnO4 minus is per manganate. Aluminum is a group 3 ion. It will be plus 3. Oxygen is group 6. It will pick up two electrons and become oxide. And finally, as we saw in the previous one, nitrite is NO2, nitrate is NO3. Wow, talk about a simple problem. Everyone sits back and says, I sure hope there's a lot of those on the test. <laughs> right? Okay, how many significant figures here? It has a decimal point. We ignore all the leading zeros. We have one, two, three, four. Only the trailing zeros count. Multiplication. We say to ourselves, I know in multiplication, we simply look at significant figures. The answer can have no more than our least significant measurement. We have a bunch. We have three. Therefore, we would round this to three significant figures. Here we have 0 0.0000013 meters. You've got to put that into scientific notation. That's all you have to do. Here's our number. We're going to take our decimal point. We're going to move it over seven places. We're going to the right. That makes it a negative exponent. So this is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 7. All right, here we're going to draw little arrows up and down. As you draw your arrows on the exam, because you will have one to do, draw them clearly enough so that I can tell which is up and which is down. Thank you. We're looking at chlorine. The question here says a mass number of 35, but we don't care what the mass number is, do we? All we care about is the electron configuration. Let's just figure out where chlorine is. It's going to be in our third period, isn't it? That means our first and our second are going to be completely filled. In our third, we're going to fill the S, and then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five in our P. There's our table. Fill it in. We said our 1s is going to be full. Our 2s is going to be full. 
we have filled up our 2p, so there's two electrons in each of them. Now in our third period, we have filled up the 3s, and we said we had five electrons in our 3p. Remember, we would put these in one at a time, all with the same spin, and then we would pair with opposite spin until we use them up. That will give us two paired and one unpaired. See how simple that is? Let's go back to sulfur. How would we abbreviate its structure, electron configuration? Well, we would find it. Sulfur's going to be here, isn't it? So, our 1s is going to be full. Our 2s and 2p are both full. Our 3s is full. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons in our 3p. Right away, we can get rid of our D. Our 2P12, we can get rid of that one. We're looking for something with all these guys full. We need a 2S2, and we said four electrons in there. That's the one that works. Well, what is true regarding the physical change? They're always accompanied by a change in state. No. A change in state is a physical change, but you could take a piece of gold and hammer it thin, it's still gold, just a physical change. And resort in formation of a homogeneous mixture. Well, that's a lot of words you've heard before, but it doesn't make sense, does it? They always produce new elements. Oh my goodness, no. None of these are correct. P2O5, what is it? First of all, is it molecular or ionic? Phosphorus lives over here in group five. Oxygen is in group six. They're both nonmetals. It is a molecular compound. So we need multipliers, don't we? We have two phosphorus and five oxygens. So we're looking for something that says diphosphorus. We're down to only two. We need to say how many oxygens we have, and that makes it pent oxide. Okay. So the multipliers you use only for the oxygen and the molecular ones, right? Yep. Copper 2 sulfate has how many oxygens in one formula unit? Well, what I would do, the simplest way is just to, on the side, jot down the structure of copper 2 sulfate, right? Copper is going to be plus 2, that's what the 2 means. What's the charge on sulfate? Sulfate is minus two. So we're going to have one copper and one sulfate. The formula for sulfate is SO4. Therefore, if we have one sulfate, we have four oxygens.
The density is 0.841 grams per mil. What volume? 458.3 grams of our liquid. We say to ourselves, density is mass divided by volume. I'm looking for volume, so I need to rearrange this. Volume is going to be mass divided by density. All I have to do is look up at my problem, take my mass, divide it by my density, and I get 69.3 milliliters. In this space below here, draw the Lewis structure for the bromate anion. Now on your exam, you will, like I said, you will draw a Lewis structure. Step one, bromine is group seven, oxygen is group six. Here's our bromine. Here's our oxygen. We have seven valence electrons here. Each oxygen will have six. Now we need to fiddle with these so that we can make nice, happy bonds. I would take one of these, where we have these three electrons that look like they're between them, just take and move this up on each of the oxygens, get that out of the way. Likewise, I would take this one and move it down on the oxygen so that they all have um, six electrons around them, paired up. Now, very clearly, I can make a bond here and a bond here, no problem. This, we're still missing one electron, but this is bromate anion. So we're going to put the electron on the bromine, makes the whole thing negative. Now, when we settle up and draw our lines, we have the bromate anion. Any questions on that? You can also use the set of rules that are in the tutorial. Add up the total number of electrons. Here we'll have 8 times 3 is 24, but we have 26. We would put our three oxygens attached, each with an octet. And then we would simply take our last two electrons, put them on the bromine. How many valence electrons around the oxygen in OF2? Well, let's just draw it out. <clears throat> oxygen is here in group 6. Fluorine, of course, is in group 7. As I look at this, I'm going to have to get rid of a couple of these electrons so I can bond over here to my fluorines. What I'll do is I'll just move them down underneath the oxygen. Now, it's trivial. All I have to do is convert this to my set of lines. And now I count. Around my oxygen, I have two, four, six, eight electrons. It has a nice, happy same sort of question 
xenon oxyfluoride. We actually made the uh, Lewis structure of this the other day. Again, xenon is a noble gas. It'll have eight electrons. Each fluorine from group seven will have seven electrons. Oxygen, group six, will have six electrons. The only place we have a real problem are these guys. Remember the little trick that we use, taking the electrons away and putting them on the corner of the page. Now we can pair them up nicely. Make one bond there, one here, one there, one there, one there. And finally, to complete the structure, we have to put these back. So what was our question? How many pairs on each fluorine? Well, fluorine, all these have eight electrons, a full octet. How many pairs? Let's see. Unshared pairs. One, two, three. And finally, the last question. Which of the following will the cation have a plus three charge? Can you read your periodic table? Calcium is group two. It will be a plus two. Magnesium is group two. It will be a plus two. Ammonium is a polyatomic. It is plus one. We'll skip a little bit. Phosphorus trichloride, my goodness, that's molecular. Therefore, aluminum, group three, will have a plus three charge. 